Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot STEM. Today we'll be covering, we'll be doing stage part two. So in stage part one, our main takeaways were that we should always use an event to, and relate it to other events using equations and with their probabilities or expected values. And also that we should exploit symmetry whenever possible so that we can more easily solve the problem. So this problem is problem number 22 from the 2014 AMC 12B and was also problem number 25 from the 2014 AMC 10B. The problem reads, in a small pond, there are 11 lily pads labeled 0 through 10. A frog is sitting on pad 1. When the frog is on pad n, it will jump to pad n minus 1 with probability n over 10, and to n plus 1 with probability 1 minus n over 10. Each jump is independent of the previous jumps. So these past two sentences were very important because these are what are we going to use to make our equations. So the first sentence tells us the equation to relate uh, pad n to pad n minus 1 and pad n plus 1. And the second equation tells us that each jump is independent. So we can just create the equations without worrying about other restrictions. If the frog reaches pad 0, it will be eaten. And if it reaches pad 10, it will exit the pond. So we want the probability that the frog will exit the pond. So let's just write the numbers 0 to 10. And let's see if we can see something interesting about them. So let's suppose the frog is at lily pad n. Then it would move to lily pad n minus 1 with probability n over 10. And it will move to n plus 1 with probability 1 minus n over 10. So since we want to exploit symmetry and not create too many equations, let's consider what happens when the frog is on pad 10 minus n, because we see that the denominators are 10, and we have 10, 11 paths, which go up to 10. So if it's on pad 10 minus n, then the probability goes to n minus 1 is 1 minus n over 10, and it goes to n plus 1 with probability n over 10. If you just plug in 10 minus n as n. So what's special about this? Well, we see that these two are equal and that these two are equal. So that means if the frog is on lily pad 5, it has an equal probability of going to lily pad 4 and lily pad 6, namely just one half. And if it's on, so if it goes to lily pad 4 or lily pad 6, since it has a one half probability, you can just say that if the frog reaches lily pad 5, it will exit the pond and get eaten by the snake with the exact same probability. So now we can, now we only have to create four or five equations. And so let's just call P of N, the probability that the lily pad will reach pad number five from point N. So it starts at lily pad one. So P, we see that P of one is equal to one tenth P of zero. But since P of zero is zero, since it will get eaten, we can just discard that. And plus nine tenths of P of two. So p of 1 is just 9 tenths p of 2. Similarly, p2 is equal to 2 tenths p of 1 plus 8 tenths p of 3. So over here, I've written the equation through p2, p3, p4, and p5. And since we defined p of n as the probability of reaching lily pad n from point n, we easily see that p of 5 is equal to 1, since you're already at lily pad 5. So now that we have p5 equals 1, we can just plug this in. So we see that p4 is equal to 2 fifths p3 plus 3 fifths, because p5 is equal to 1. Plugging this back into the third equation, we see that p3 is equal to 3 tenths p2 plus 7 tenths of p4, which is equal to 2 fifths p3 plus 3 fifths. So let's just plug this in over here. And expanding the stuff in the parentheses out, we see that p in 25th, p of 3, is equal to 3 tenths p of 2 plus, plus 21 over 50. And multiplying both sides by eight, 25 over 18 gives that p3 is equal to 
75 over 180 p of 2, which simplifies to 512, plus 21 over 36, which is equal to 712. So now we can plug in p of 3 for in our equation for p of 2. So we see that p of 2 is equal to 2 tenths p of 1, which is just 1 fifth, plus 4 fifths p of 3. And we can use what we found earlier. Since p of 3 is equal to 5 twelfths p of 2 plus 7 twelfths, so this is just 5 twelfths. plus 7 over 12. And expanding this, we see that p of 2 is equal to 1 fifth p1 plus 4 over 5 times 5 over 12 p of 2, which is just 1 third p of 2, plus 4 over 5 times 7 over 12, which is equal to 7 over 15. And so moving the p of 2s to one side, as we did with p of 3, we see that 2 thirds p of 2 is equal to equal to 1 fifth p of 1 plus 7 over 15. And multiplying both sides by 3 over 2, we see that p of 2 is equal to 3 tenths p1 plus 7 over 15 times 3 over 2, which is equal to 7 over 10. So with this, we can plug this back into P of 1. So P of 1 is equal to 9 tenths. 9 tenths times P of 2, which is also equal to 3 tenths P1 plus 7 tenths. For 100. Expanding this and moving the p of 1 to the left hand side, we see that 73 over 100 p of 1 is equal to 63 over 100. So p1 is equal to 63 over 73. However, this is not enough to solve the problem because we said earlier that the we, we defined earlier that p of n is the probability of going from lily pad n to 5. And we also noticed that p of 5 is simply equal to 1 half because of its symmetry about 10. So we just have to multiply our final answer by 1 half. So 63 over 73 times 1 half is equal to 63 divided by 146. And looking at the answer choices, we see that this corresponds with answer choice C. And we are done.